A good day again, St. Lucia, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney, your host. Today with me is Mr. Winston Elliott, who is the Crop Protection Officer attached to the Crop Research Division in the Ministry of Agriculture. And uh, today we will be discussing three areas of interest. One is our yam rust which is just coming to St. Lucia, affecting our yams. We also have the South American palm weevil, and of course our usual TR4, because he's at the point person for TR4, and I'm sure you've heard so much about TR4, but we will still give an update on TR4 uh, during the program. Welcome to the program, Mr. Elliott. Uh, good day, Mr. Sidney. Thanks for having me on this afternoon, today on your program. Great. Why, nothing stops is after one is another. Um, TRO4 is, is, is on the horizon. The South American palm weasel is on, is on the horizon too. I don't think it's in Lucia yet. And of course, look, now we have the yam rust. So tell us about the yam rust. Well, uh, give us a little background of, of that disease. Okay, yam rust is a, a fungus. This disease was reported in Dominica two years ago. Right now, this disease, it is, is presently on island. We're not sure of what are the sources in terms of how it could have Got gone to St. Lucia, mm -hmm. but the modes of transmission vary. But it's a fungus that can thrive in a humid environment. If we notice in the recent past, we have had a, a lot of rains, a lot of humid conditions. It can be transmitted by wind, by rain, by planting material, a number of different ways that it can be transported from one area to another, from one farm. If there is an infected farm, if you move the planting material from one farm to another farm, it can be transmitted by those, those means. But how do you believe it got into St. Lucia? Well, it could have been transmitted mostly by the planting material. We have a huge challenge. We have very porous borders. Sometimes people try to bring in planting material through by, by sea, by boat, or even for courier services, um, for seeds. And this poses a huge challenge for us mm -hmm. as an agricultural industry because a farmer or somebody, it can be a traveler, it can be a visitor, bringing it, going somewhere and they see a plant that, that they like and they bring in that planting material and they do not know, they do not carry out any, the necessary measures to um, ensure that it's phytocertified from our ministry or the, the country from which oh, it came. Origin, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that creates huge challenges. And that could be one of the ways that it was transmitted from one country, especially through planting material. A lot of the challenges that we have is people moving planting materials, and it's not by um, through wind transmission or mm -hmm. animals, but people bringing in those planting materials. The other challenge is that when we bring in when those planting material get in here, we have, they, they, these are invasive species and they can thrive in varying environments. It poses a huge challenge to the agricultural industry because we have to look at, in terms of eradication, it's almost impossible. It is difficult to control. Then we have to go on sensitization campaigns. We have to look at cost of control. That will bring up the cost of, of, the, of the produce mm -hmm. itself. We might have to use pesticides which are harmful to ourselves, to the environment, can also affect biodiversity. Mm -hmm. What are the symptoms, basically, on the, on the leaves, right? Okay, well, they're yellow to brown pustules that is usually on the upper, upper surface of the leaves. In some cases, you can see it on the underside of the leaf, but it's pustules that are more pronounced on the on, upper, on the upper, upper surface epidemis, yeah, yeah, of, leaves. of the leaves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's noticeable on the the stems of the plant, even the leaf stalk, it can be observed um, in more advanced stages. The, 
the, the, the, the rust can be observed. So what um, impact would it have on production? Well, initially what that infection would affect photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is, is the production of, of food um, creating the tuber. So what you find happening is that the plant would have reduced vigor. It can even make it more susceptible to other diseases like anthracnose. We can also have a situation where the tuber, tuberization would be affected. So it will not be able to give as big as a, a tuber, as, a, as, tuber as it should be. So that mm -hmm. would adversely affect uh, the productivity of, of that, that, that plant. Okay, so far, um, what do you all intend to do? As I, I, I was told that there will be a survey that you intend to carry out. Okay, well, the ministry is taking a proactive approach. And what we intend to do is what we are, have been doing, what we have implemented thus far, because this disease was uh, observed about uh, a month, the latter part of last year. And what we have decided to do is carry out an awareness campaign um, sensitize farmers, sensitize pub, the public. Um, people, pe there's a lot of movement of people from one island to another, from various parts of, internally also from um, various parts of the island, people moving planting materials. So we want to sensitize the public, the farming community, and let them know how that pest can be trans transmitted from one area to another. So sensitization is a huge role that we will be carrying out we will also be doing a survey so that we can know to what extent that Yamras is presently on island. So you, you, do you know exactly now as we speak uh, where it is now in terms of zoning, what part of the island it, it, it's okay, well, breeding? So far we have done a number of farm visits. We have, we have been collaborating closely with our extension staff. And in some areas in the southern regions and the western regions, we have observed the Yamras there. That is why we try our best to ensure that we carry out that sensitization. The survey to find out what the extent of the problem is, because part of the survey will be asking information like what varieties that we observe, what varieties that have been planted, what extent. Is it affecting, the, is it affecting all varieties? Uh, yes. It, it, Th that is one of the things our survey will be trying to give us information on because mm -hmm. one of the control measures could be using resistant varieties. But unless we do not go out there and investigate to ascertain to what extent that the, the problem is and what varieties that might be uh, more prone or more susceptible, more resistant, then we'd be in a better position to advise farmers, to advise stakeholders uh, how we, what measures that what plants that we can use to, uh, that are more resistant. How is that pest identified and where? Okay, basically, like I said, the symptoms, it's a, it's a pest that affects yams. And based on looking at the, the leaves, you can see um, yellow to browning, raised um, pustules on the upper surface of the leaf. What we have done is when we, we took samples from the field, and we carried our tests at our lab at, at, at Union at the National Diagnostic Center um, facility. And we ascertained that actually it is the presence of that fungus mm. that causes um, Yamras. It has been here for, for how long is it? Well, in the latter part of last, last year, year, November, December, oh. mm -hmm. that's when we got the reports. And over the holidays, you know, it is difficult to get people out to come to mm -hmm. meetings and so on. Mm -hmm. So this is why, you know, we found it opportune right after the holidays are finished, implement a program to create awareness and carry out that survey. So before the survey, you all could not um, uh, give any sort of identification in terms of whether it, it, it really affected production economically? No, well, we have not been able to ascertain to what extent that mm. it has affected productivity because what you find happen with the rust is that it can adversely affect production. But not, we need to do the survey to find out to what extent mm -hmm. that it mm -hmm. actually could impact on, on production, whether, whether it's negatively or to what extent, based on our interaction and the results of the survey. So, okay, after the survey is done, uh, you're able to tabulate the results. 
um, would there be some sort of research, in, like you mentioned, varietal trials? Mm -hmm. Will you, are you all doing field research, planting various varieties, and to see whether they are susceptible to that disease? Well, like I said, based on the results, then we'll be in a we'll better be position, position to look at Mm. which varieties that probably would be more resistant information coming from, from, from the farmers, um, the persons that uh, people, sometimes even people at the household, we might be able to get information from them also. Mm. And then we'll be in a better position to guide. And probably we might even, you know, go into planting some, some varieties to see what kind of impact it, it has, the, mm -hmm. the, the fungus has. Okay. And in terms of, of, of um, um, pest control, um, is there any chemical that can be used to? Well, we, we try our best to Steer look it. at an integrated pest management approach. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of that, what, what we'd like to promote is basically prevention would be one of the, the, key, the key rules in terms of key strategies to use. So we'd like people to not move in planting material from one farm to another. This is the main mode of, tra uh, of transmission. Mm -hmm. In terms of control, we talk about field sanitation. Um, we, you don't have too many, you have weeds, uh, a lot of weeds. If you notice there, there are leaves that are infected, you'd remove, if it's not a lot of leaves that are infected, you'd remove those leaves and burn them. We'd also want to ensure that people are not, one of the main things is that movement of planting material from one part to one place to another. The spores uh, can also be transmitted through our shoes, our clothing. The soil. The, uh, soil. Mm. Um, it's a fungus. It can move very easily um, in wind, in rain. And humid conditions, they like humid conditions. To, they can thrive easily in humid conditions. Mm. Although those spores can be very hardy, even in the dry season, they can still thrive. But during the rainy season, um, people moving from one place to the other because of rain. And uh, also, they can, th these are modes that they can, can easily be transmitted from one, one place to another. Well, can you see, when you have a yam, all right? yam, when you have a farm, you have a yam. Do you know what is the yam? And what is the yam that is attacked from the yam? Um, vermin sala se an vermin sa nou ka kwi yam ras. Ek ise an vermin dat ou ka pli hen an le, an le fey, an le fey yam. Ek an, an koumans man ou ka we dat i ka koumans se jon pou an, an, an manye kako an le fey la mem. De le ou ka we adese fey la ka koumans se laji. Le diziz la reli ka avanse. Ek sa se yon adese manye dat ou sa we dat diziz la ka afekte yam la. Bon, depuis qu'il y a des disease uh, où est la présence de la uh, vermine sala? Depuis uh, uh, finissement l'année passée, nous observons la présence de la disease sala, nous avons des rapports et nous allons investiguer. Et then, nous prenons des samples et nous allons en lab et nous testons pour voir que la disease est une disease qui est un champion qui cause la disease sala. Sauf que c'est la femme qui dit ça. We do the hand sewer power from the farmer. You probably buy the extension officer. And then no and no no I wear. And then no for samples. And no observe. So that is the problem, la mem. But what do you know about vermin sa sorti? Well, vermin sa sa sorti from different places, different côté. It's a man delay a man popular from young côté that they have affected because this is a certain disease that. Il s'est à côté d'un qui a infecté, il s'est à côté d'un côté d'un bien, d'un côté qui est healthy, et qui a infecté l'autre côté. L'un pays, en, en Dominique, tout près nous, il y a deux ans et depuis, il a apporté ce problème là. Et nous pouvons aussi voir qui manière entre un pays, mais la même manière dont um, le vermin s'est entré, c'est les gens qui ont pris un plan de l'un côté pour aller d'un l'autre côté qui a infecté. Ok, c'est ça que nous ne pouvons dire à chaque monde, pas mener à l'entrée, à valiser, et que c'est bien mener à l'entrée, parce qu'il n'y a pas de savoir qui ça va mener à l'entrée. Oui, et ça, ça, ça coûte um, un gros, un chaque gros problème, parce que dès que nous avons un plan que nous coûtons, et que nous avons mené à l'entrée, 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 à l'
de le, puisque nous coûtons, de le placer en même à infecté, infecté. Et, right away, nous commençons à un gros problème dans les côtes. Nous. Mm -hmm. Just because nous avons essayé de satisfaire quoi nous, nous avons affecté la whole nation, là pour venir à ce link. D'accord, ok, nous sommes due pour un break. Vous êtes watching Agriculture on the Move, stay tuned, nous we'll be back very soon. For effective chemical treatment of black cigatoka, practice routine preventative maintenance of all tools and equipment, especially the mist blower, to ensure proper functioning. Clean sprayer after use and service the machine regularly, as recommended by the manufacturer. Whenever you are using pesticides to control black cigatoka disease, personal protection and safety measures must be followed. Spray operators must always wear proper protective gear. Before or when handling pesticides, put on your overalls, respirator, goggles, boots, and gloves to avoid contact with the skin, inhalation, and ingestion of pesticides. For more information on how to treat and control Black Sigatoga on your farm or in your backyard garden, contact the Black Sigatoga Management Unit at 451-5091, 451-5894, or email bpmu at candw.lc. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the International Cooperation and Development Fund of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. My guest, Mr. Winston Elliott, Crop Protection Officer, attached to the Crop Research Unit in the Ministry of Agriculture. We are talking about plant rust. We talk about climate change. Well, boy, we have it bashing us, climate change, everything around us. Now we have plant rust, um, yam rust. And so we have to be very careful. And of course, you've heard Mr. Elliott give you a, a synopsis of what the yam rust is all about and po um, po possible control. Um, in terms of awareness, um, Winston, um, moving forward, uh, what's, in, what's in place? Well. Our crop protection unit has put in a number of strategies to ensure heightened awareness over a sustained period. So we plan to have a number of farmer meetings. We have already started making those arrangements. Part of those, those meetings will involve uh, having PowerPoint presentations with farmers, field sessions. We will also be doing press releases. We will be doing interviews, releases on the ministry's website, uh, releases of the newspaper outlet, newspaper, the outlets, news outlets online, and farm visits, home visits, interacting with the farming community primarily that would be most affected. These are, these are most of our, our target audience in carrying out heightened sensitization for the Yamras. Okay, so in the meantime, um, what are you asking the farmers to do? Well, we're asking farmers to be observant. One of the things about in, in crop protection, we always have to observe our crops, monitor our crops on a regular basis. Our yams, monitor, monitor them closely. If you see any strange symptoms that you're not used to seeing, contact your nearest extension officer. Do not move planting material from one area to another. You can have infected planting material that can move from one area to another. This is the most pronounced way of the fungus moving from one part of the island to another. Uh, it's already in some of the areas we would like to really try and contain it. And we encourage farmers not to move planting material from one place to another. It can easily be transmitted in these times that we are in now. There's a very conducive environment for the fungus to thrive. And, and they like living material uh, plants are growing vigorously now, mm -hmm. lots of rain, lots of humidity. The fungus can thrive rapidly. Great, great. Thank you for that. Okay, so we move from Yamras to the South American palm weevil. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this. Well, the South American palm weevil, we had a challenge in 2022 where we had uh, one farmer that had the palm weevil. And the South American palm weevil is a weevil that can affect coconuts, and it's also a vector to, uh, that can transmit red ring disease nematode that can destroy uh, coconut plants. And that disease can 
be very, can have a, a huge adverse impact on the entire coconut industry. And just think of for a moment, us not having coconuts in St. Lucia, mm -hmm. or you have to pay $5 for coconut because um, the supply is very limited. So what the ministry did uh, when we realized we had that problem, we got the support of, uh, of Cardi and ICA, they, they supported us on this initiative. We went in, we had to uh, fell a number of trees on the farmer's holding, and we found it necessary to set up a number of traps island-wide. We had traps in all of the eight agricultural regions. And we monitored for a period of a year. Of a year. And based on the results of our survey, we realized that while we still have the, the weevils, you'll find, them our, you'll find them in a number of areas right across the island. But in terms of creating a problem for or coconuts or coconut trees dying or they're affecting coconut trees, that is not the case. We have found it necessary that uh, be, due to manpower resources, we continue monitoring, but we're not going to continue monitoring all the traps island wide. We'll continue interacting with farmers. Our extension staff will be doing that. Our crop production staff will be doing that. But we have found it necessary in one of the regions uh, where the problem started that we're going, to keep, we're going to keep the traps there because there are still some challenges there. We need to continue monitoring while we continue monitoring in the other regions, but we'll keep the traps in, in those regions where we found a problem initially. What are the real symptoms so that farmers can be aware of, of that disease? Well, the symptoms, the main symptoms would be you find the top of the coconut tree, you can see um, yellowing of the leaves, um, the, the coconut tree will start dying. Um, you might see uh, trees dying sparsely, like in different parts of, of your holding uh, coconut trees. Um, these are the main symptoms that, that you would experience with, with the South American palm weevil. So what do you do if that tree is affected? Do you cut it down and you, 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 you burn it? or What, what do you well, do? The, the first thing, if, if a farmer or somebody comes across a tree that has a problem, the best thing to do is contact your extension officer because all oh, the crop protection unit, we, we're always ready and, and willing to support because you might see something and it might not necessarily be that. Mm -hmm. We'd like to know what the problem is because there are other uh, pests that, that affect um, coconuts and, and um, other crops. So it's always best to contact your extension officer and we, t we come in, we do a farm visit and we take it from there. Yeah, but I'm, I'm still saying that if it is definitely identified as the South American palm weevil, mm -hmm. what do you do? Okay, year? well, the measures that we have implemented when we came across that challenge, we had to um, fell the trees and we, we, we burned, the trees were burnt. They were burnt. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Um, so are you saying that disease is not, as, is not prevalent in, on island? We do not have, from all indications, uh, what our results have shown, we do not have red ring disease in St. Lucia. We do have the South American palm weevil. You'll find the South American palm weevil all over St. Lucia, uh, especially in areas that are close to forests you will find the South American palm weevil. And they live out there, they live, they live, they're part of our ecosystem, they're part of our biodiversity. So it's not all of the time that you'll find that they will adversely affect um, the coconut trees and, and cause an impact to adversely, impact, uh, to adversely have a, a, a negative impact on, on productivity. So we do not have the red ring nematode disease? No, we do not have the red ring nematode disease. In and and it, it, it's, a, it's as a result of the palm weevil, right? Eh? Yeah, the palm weevil is a vector, vector yeah. for red ring disease. But, and we do not have the red ring disease? No, we do not have the red ring disease, okay. but we have the vector, which is the South American palm weevil, which you'll find out, find in the forest, among, um, in the farming community. You'll find, uh, you'll find the weevil out there. But to what extent uh, or damage that the, the weevil will do to a tree to enable it to, to fell it? Okay, well, what are, the way the, the palm weevil, the larvae of the palm weevil eats away at the heart of the coconut ah, tree. Okay. And when it, it feeds on that, as a result of feeding on that, eventually it kills the tree. 
if it kills the tree, then that means the tree is of no use. It, you, it cannot produce coconuts anymore. Mm -hmm. So it would be best that the, you, can, you fell the tree mm -hmm. so that it cannot remain on the farm anymore um, to allow other trees that are in the area to, to thrive. Okay, so lanyard disease can affect the cocoa, or salvacion, or anti vermin. Do you know about that? You see, anti bed, sanukakui, a weevil. A weevil, sa is anti bed that can atwe di da che cocoa. I ti ti bed la, i ni sanukakui ti am lave that can manje che cocoa. A ka parite ka manje che cocoa, i ka end up tre che cocoa. Il a fait un peu de cocoa. Aussi, Bet Salani, il sait, ça nous a coupé un vecteur. Il s'apporte un lot de disease. Ça nous a coupé un red ring disease. From yon plan pour aller à lot de pieds coco. Et il sait un bagage que depuis qu'il fait un pied coco, il a tué un pied coco. Non, nous n'avons pas de disease. 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 Nous n'avons Disease là, that it can cause no panic disease ça là, cette lici, no panic person disease ça, cette lici pour à présent. Ok, on a eu un minute pour parler about TR4. Quand on a TR4 nous a fait un chai de match, moins, moins plein en chai avec un mode that les femmes, les peps, cette lici, ben non chai si pour, un chai c'est mon la femme, ni c'est Jean Customs, ni c'est mon la cata vice class, ben, yo ha ben non chai si pour, à ce, um, et qui est collaborer avec nous, travailler ensemble avec nous, pour try best nous pour empêcher les champions d'arriver à cette liste. Et moi, je veux continuer à dire que nous ne sommes pas supposés si amener pièces blanches à sortir de l'autre pays si nous ne sommes pas en contact avec le ministère, parce que les pièces blanches ne sont pas supposées si entrer dans le pays sans um, authorisation, sans papier qui sort de l'office. Oui, well, M. Léon, je veux vous remercier parce que nous sommes arrivés à la fin du programme. So I don't know if you have just a few final words, last 20 seconds. Moi, je dis que les peuples pays et les femmes continuent à faire des supports que vous avez. Nous avons une bonne information que vous avez satisfait avec le mode que vous avez avec vous. Et vous avez assisté à nous en pile pour faire une commission à aller dans le monde. Nous avons une démarche qui est nécessaire. Pas pour un plan de votre côté pour aller dans l'autre côté. Ok. Thank you, Mr. Elliot, for being here. And I wish you success. Merci Continue, à... especially with that, with that um, yam rust that we have, okay? Yeah, merci à peu, Mr. Sidney. You have been watching Agriculture on the Move. Thank you for viewing the program. And remember, agriculture is our business. So that is why we have to be alert to, uh, uh, when we look at those diseases that are affecting us. Yam rust, the South American palm weevil, and of course, TR4. I'm Philip Sidney saying goodbye and see you again. Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. I think we'd be Agriculture on the move. 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 Agriculture on the move.